سؤال ما هي الصفات التي ينبغي لطالب العلم والداعي إلى الله في الغرب خصوصا والعالم عموما أن يتصف بها في تعليمه للناس ودعوته إلى الله Question What are those characteristics that the student of knowledge and the caller to Allah particularly in the West and generally in the world that he must have and that he must adorn himself with when teaching the people and calling them to Allah الصفات طبعا المطلوبة في ذلك ستكون كثيرة جدا لا يمكن في هذا المقام أن أذكرها وهي مذكورة في كتب يعني طلب العلم كجامع بيان العلم وفضله كجامع بيان العلم وفضل ابن عبد البر والفقيه المتفقه الخطاب البغداء للخطيب البغدادي ومن قبلهما أخلاق العلماء للآجري ونحوهما من الكتب المؤلفة في هذا الباب ولكن أنا أذكر يعني في نظري أبرز هذه الصفات وهذه الأمور شيخ أحمد بزمول حفظه الله تعالى he responded by saying of course the characteristics that are required from an individual to adorn oneself with they are many it is not possible to mention all of them here in this sitting. Also, they have been mentioned in the books regarding the seeking of knowledge, like the book Jami' Bayan al-Ilm wa Fadlih by Ibn Abdul Bar, rahimahullah. Likewise, Al-Faqih wa Al-Mutafaqih by Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, rahimahullah. And also before them too, there's the book Akhlaq al-Ulama by al-Ajuri rahimahullah and the likes of that which have been authored regarding this topic. However, I will mention that which I see in my view to be the most distinguished of these characteristics. Al-Amr al-Awwal al-Ikhlas Al-Ikhlas lillahi azza wa jal fi hadha al-Amal al-Da'awi wa al-Amal al-Fadil l-Talib al-Ilm fa'inna فإننا لو تأملنا حال كثير من الناس إنما وقعوا فيما وقعوا فيه من الفتن أنهم أرادوا غير وجه الله عز وجل ولم يريدوا وجه الله عز وجل فتنتهم الأموال فتنتهم المناصب وال يعني والجاه فتنهم أيضا التفاف الناس حولهم فتنهم أمور الدنيا فلو كان الداعي إلى الله عز وجل مخلصا لله عز وجل يريد الثواب من الله عز وجل فإنه لا يحرك ساكنا إلا لله عز وجل فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان لا يغضب وإنما كان يغضب إذا انتهكت حرمات الله عز وجل فلم يكن يسأب لنفسه صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا من علامات الإخلاص The first matter that it is befitting to adorn oneself with is sincerity The student of knowledge having sincerity for Allah in this noble action of calling others to Allah Indeed, if we were to contemplate over the state of many people, they have only fallen into that which they have fallen into from the fitan, from the trials and the tribulations, due to them intending other than the face of Allah. They did not intend Allah's face, Azza wa Jal. They have been put to trials due to wealth. They have been put to trials due to position and status. They have been put to trials due to people gathering around them. And they have been put to trials due to the affairs of the worldly life. If the caller to Allah is sincerely calling for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, seeking the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal, indeed he will not make a move except for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Indeed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not get angry for his personal self. Rather he used to become angry when the sanctuaries of Allah were violated. He did not go to seek revenge for himself. And this is from the signs of sincerity. <laughs> وكثيرا من طلبة العلم إلا من رحم الله نجدهم يثأرون لأنفسهم كالأسود وكالسباع المفترسة إذا أحد تعدى عليهم بشعرة أما إذا انتهكت حرمة الصحابة وانتهكت حرمة السنة وانتهكت حرمة العلم وحرمة الدين لا يحركون ساكنا فإذا وصل الصحابة بالغثائية أو وصل الصحابة بأن فيهم حفالة أو وصل الصحابة بأن فيهم كذا أو كذا يعني يعتبر عن هذا الكلام وكأنه شيء يسير وسهل أما إذا قيل فيه بالشعرة قامت القيامة وألف الكتب وهذا دليل على عدم الإخلاص فالإخلاص أمره مهم ويدندن كثير من العلماء حول الإخلاص لكن قل من يفقه هذا الأمر 
قل من يمتثل هذا الأمر والله لو أن كثيرا من هؤلاء أصحاب الفتن أخلصوا لله عز وجل لما وقعوا فيما وقعوا فيه فإن, الأخ... فإن الإخلاص لله عز وجل نجاة بإذن الله عز وجل مع التمسك بالسنة The Shaykh حفظه الله تعالى He went on to say As for today we find many callers and many students of knowledge Except for those whom Allah has had mercy upon They seek revenge for themselves like lions on other predatory animals If one transgresses against them the amount of an hair As for the sanctity of the Sahaba As for if the sanctity of the Sahaba were violated Or if the sanctity of the Sunnah was violated Or if the sanctity of the religion was violated Then they don't move one bit If the Sahaba were described as being scum Or if the Sahaba were described as being rubbish Or such and such and They make excuses for this type of speech As if it was something insignificant However if the slightest thing was said about an individual Judgment is established And he offers books in defense of himself This is an evidence of the absence of sincerity Sincerity is an important matter The ulama consistently focus on the matter of sincerity However it's few who understand this matter It's a few who implement this matter by Allah, if many of these people are fit in trials and tribulations and trouble, if they were only sincere for Allah, they wouldn't have fallen into that which they had fallen into. Indeed, the matter of sincerity is a matter of salvation by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal, along with holding fast to the Sunnah. <laughs> النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرسله الله عز وجل ليطاع ويتابع فيما أمر صلى الله عليه وسلم ويجتنب ما نهى عنه الحرف على السنة علما وتعلما وعملا هو دعب السلف الصالح رضوان الله عليهم فأوصي نفسي, بالتمس نفسي وإخواني بالتمسك بالسنة والعمل بها وتقديمها على الآراء والأهواء الشيخ حفظ الله تعالى he goes on and he says the second matter, which I advise them with, and I advise myself with, after sincerity, then that is the following of the sunnah, and no innovating inside of the religion. The Prophet ﷺ was sent by Allah to be obeyed and to be followed in that which he commanded. He was sent in order that things that he forbade are kept away from. Having eagerness over the sunnah, by way of knowledge, learning, and implementation, it is the call of the Salaf of Salih, radiyallahu anhum. I advise myself and I advise my brothers to hold fast to the Sunnah, implementing it and giving it precedence over their views and statements. Aydan, kama sabak usihum bi wa adam wa adam al iltifat aw al inhiraf il al ahwa wa al ara. الجديدة المحدثة ولا يكون أتباع كل ناعق فالناس ثلاثة عالم ومتعلم وجاهل فكن إما عالما أو متعلما ولا تكن الثالث فتهلك والتمسك بالسنة وبهذه السلف الصالح رضوان الله عليه مع الإخلاص فإنه بإذن الله عز وجل وبمشيئته سبحانه وتعالى يوفق صاحبه لأمور الأمر الأول البعد عن الفتن الأمر الثاني لو وقع فيها فإنه يخرج منها بإذن الله عز وجل الأمر الثالث أن يكون إماما يقتدى به الأمر الرابع أن يكون معلما للناس الخير الأمر الخامس أن يوفقه الله عز وجل في حياته الدينية والدنيوية وفي شأنه كله فإن من كان مع الله عز وجل كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لابن عباس في وصيته العظيمة يا غلام إني أعلمك كلمات احفظ الله يحفظك احفظ الله تجد تجاهك تعرف على الله في الرخاء يعرفك بالشدة احفظ الله يحفظك فلا شك أن المخلص المتبع للسنة على هدي السلف الصالح قد حفظ الله عز وجل فإنه كما أخبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في جواب الأمر يحفظك أي and also, as preceded, 
I advise them with holding on to the sunnah and not becoming deviated by the way of newly invented matters of desires and views. Also, they are not to be followers of anyone who shouts out with a call. The people are of three types. One, a scholar. Two, a person who is learning. Three, the one who is ignorant. So thus be a scholar or be one who is learning and do not be of the third. For the result of being, meaning from the third, is that you will become destroyed. So therefore hold on to the sunnah and hold on to the guidance of the Salaf al-Salih radiyallahu anhum along with sincerity by the permission of Allah, the one who possesses these matters, then he will be given success to attain the following matters. The first matter, he will be far away from fitan. He will be far away from trials and tribulations. The second matter, if he falls into them, if he falls into the trials and the tribulations, he will come out of them by the, by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. The third matter, he will be an example to be followed. The fourth matter, he will be one who teaches the people good. The fifth matter, Allah will give him success in his religious life and in his worldly life and in all of his affairs. Indeed, the one who is with Allah, it is as the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned in the narration of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma in his great advice to him when he said to him what means, O oh, young boy, I will teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah and Allah will preserve you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him, meaning Allah, in front of you. Know Allah in times of ease and he, Allah, will know you in times of hardship. The Shaykh Allah Ta'ala, he goes on to say, Be mindful of Allah, he will preserve you. There is no doubt that the one who is sincere follows the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon the guidance of the Salaf al-Salih. He is the one who is indeed mindful of Allah. So it is as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated in his response, Allah will preserve you. وفي قصة موسى عليه السلام مع الخضر في الجدار قال وأما الجدار فكان لغلامين يتيمين في المدينة وكان تحته كنز لهما وكان أبوهما صالحا فحفظ الله عز وجل هذا المال لهذين الغلامين لأن أبوهما كان لأن أباهما كان صالحا أي تقيا يخاف الله عز وجل الشيخ حفظ الله تعالى he goes on and he says, in the story of Musa, where he went along with Khidr regarding the wall, Allah said about it, what translated means, and as for the wall, it belongs to two orphan boys in the town, and there was under it a treasure belonging to them, and their father was a righteous man. The Shaykh Hamadullah Ta'ala, he goes on and he says, Allah preserved the wealth of these orphans because their father was righteous, meaning he was one who had taqwa, he had fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. أيضا من الصفات التي يعني نحتاجها في هذه الأيام غوصي نفسي وإخواني طلاب العلم بها الرجوع للعلماء علماء السنة العلماء المعروفين بالحق والمعروفين بسلامة المنهج المعتقد لا أصحاب الأهواء وأصحاب الأغراض والحذر كل الحذر ممن ينفق في نفسه ويدعي أنه عالم ويريد أن يعظم نفسه فإن منهب السلف وطريقة السلف مع أمثال هؤلاء الذين يعظمون أنفسهم ويدعون إلى أنفسهم ويثأرون لأنفسهم ولا يرضون, ولا يرضون أن يتكلم فيهم بشعرة أن يغسلوا أيديهم منهم لأنهم يعلمون أنهم قد يعني هلكوا ومنها قولهم حب الظهور يقسم الظهور ف... فهذه ال... فهؤلاء الذين يعظمون أنفسهم ليسوا بعلماء بل هؤلاء جهال وهؤلاء يعني مثل السباع التي تصطاد الفريسة يصطادون طلاب العلم ب... ب... بأن ينفقوا في أنفسهم وأن يعظموا أنفسهم عند هؤلاء المرء يعظ... تعظمه السنة يعظمه اتباع الحق يعظمه كونه مع الله عز وجل لا أن يعظم نفسه بنفسه من عظم نفسه بنفسه فقط أما من عظمته السنة وعظمته اتباعه وعظمه اتباعه اتباعه للحق فإن هذا نرجو له بإذن الله عز وجل أن يرفعه الله عز وجل في الدرجات العلى. 
and also from the characteristics that we are in need of in these days and in these times in which I advise myself and my brothers, the students of knowledge, with, is returning back to the ulama, the ulama of the sunnah, the ulama that are known for the truth, those who are known for having soundness in minhaj and in creed, not the people of desires and or the people of personal agendas. Take caution from the one who blows himself up, claiming that he is a scholar intending to magnify himself. Indeed, the minhaj of the salaf and the way of the salaf regarding the likes of those who magnify themselves, calling to themselves, seeking revenge for themselves, and they are not pleased with anyone who speaks about them, is that they will wash their hands from them because they know that they will become destroyed. From their statements about the likes of these individuals is like, loving for being known breaks the backbone. Those who magnify themselves are not ulama, rather they are ignorant. The likes of these individuals are similar to the hunters who seize the opportunity. They seize the opportunity with the students of knowledge and they puff themselves up and magnify themselves around them. The following of the sunnah is what magnifies a person. The following of the truth is what magnifies the person. His statement being in agreement with the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal magnifies him. Not that the person magnifies himself. The one who magnifies himself has fallen from grace. As for the one who the sunnah has magnified and the following of the truth has magnified, this one we hope for by the permission of Allah that he will be in a high status. أيضا من الصفات المهمة التي أوصي نفسي وإخواني بها البعد عن الخلاف والبعد عن الشر وإذا اختلفنا أن لا نتجارى في المجادلة بل متى ظهر لنا الحق رجعنا إليه وتمسكنا به حتى لا يكثر الاختلاف وحتى لا يحصل التفرق بين السلفيين فإن كثيرا من الخلاف الواقع بين بعض السلفيين يمكن حله بسهولة ولكن للأسف بعد كثير من طلاب العلم عن الألفة والمحبة والمودة في الله عز وجل يوقعهم في هذا الأمر. The Sheikh حفظ الله تعالى he concludes by mentioning also from the characteristic that I advise myself and my brothers with is to be far away from differing, be far away from evil, and if we differ regarding a matter, we do not indulge one another in debating. Rather, when the truth becomes apparent to us. We return back to it and we hold on to it. This is in order that the matter of differing doesn't become prevalent amongst us and in order that separation doesn't take place amongst the Salafiyin. Indeed, many of the differing that takes place amongst some of the Salafiyin, the possibility of bringing a solution to the problem is easy. However, sadly, due to many of the students of knowledge being far away from having a bond, connection and love for one another, for the sake of Allah, it puts them into the affair of differing.